Hello and welcome to a new off the track tutorial. Today I will be going through the body modeling process. So now we're going to move on to step three of making the car, which is actually modeling the body. You can go into a top view and start sketching around the parameters and the regulations that we have just modeled in Fusion. Uh, you can go for a design you like of your choice. This is a top view surface because after this we're just going to extrude. Um, there are different ways to do this, but this is just as a, a design I thought of the uh, top of my head. So uh, whatever you think is good, make sure you refer back to your aerodynamicist or a design engineer or whoever is uh, designing the car and uh, ensure that you get the specs right and uh, you communicate well throughout your team during this process. Make sure that when you are sketching out the silhouette of your side pods that you are keeping in line with the wheels as you don't want to be any wider than you already are as that will increase frontal surface area and therefore increase drag. Depending on what design you're thinking about will depend on what your nose is going to look like. So for this design, I'm going to attach the front wing to the nose. And because of this, I want it to be very structurally stable, but also it needs to be thin enough to the point that the front wing is able, is able to have the full 25 millimeters with an additional tolerance. Uh, because of this, uh, I went for a five millimeter thick nose and because that's either side that'll eventually go up to 10 millimeters and uh, as said earlier it was 16 millimeters from sorry 31 millimeters from reference plane a which is 16 millimeters from the front axle of the front wheel if you're looking to get a nice curve between the parametric lines a good one to use is the spline tool as a your kind of able to then iterate it after a while by uh, moving the handles to different positions and uh, then the intensity changes as well afterwards. So after you've turned your sketch into a polygon by just putting a straight line through the middle of it, you can then actually extrude it, extrude it all the way to the top of the virtual cargo and selecting it as a new component. Make sure that you're using a two-face extrusion tool because you're going to use one arrow to go all the way up to the virtual cargo and a second arrow to ensure that you have that two millimeter gap uh, from the track surface. The legal amount is 1.5 but once again we're adding a 0.5 millimeter tolerance for the uh, manufacturing inconsistencies so what you're seeing me do is trying to use the shell tool to almost create a uh, three millimeter border around the uh, main body and uh, while this is a good idea sadly it just didn't work so don't do this uh, completely miss out the shell tool it'll help you a lot more in the future so now you've got your non-shelled body uh, you're now going to go into a side profile view and uh, just sketch around the virtual cargo and the nose to ensure it kind of gives a nice aerodynamic look. Uh, make sure, once again, you don't go into the regulations and uh, make sure that you're trying to get the back as, uh, as thin as possible because you don't want a large surface area at the back because that will uh, increase the weight at the back of a car, which increases drag. Once again, just to say to not go into the regulations, for instance, the nose cannot be higher than 25 millimeters from the track surface. And uh, the nose, as it is being joined to the front wing, has to be 20 millimeters or lower, as otherwise it's gonna intersect with the visibility of the front wheels, which uh, again leads to a loss of points in scrutineering. Uh, once again, using spline to make sure that there's a nice kind of smooth transition from the nose to the halo as we don't want any uh, sharp gradients on the car as uh, this will uh, cause high pressure zones, which is not good. Once you finish sketching the front of a car, you can then actually start to move towards the back of a car. And uh, a good thing to do is to start to taper in the body once you've gotten past the virtual cargo. And the reason why you don't wanna start tapering the body before the virtual cargo is because then your virtual cargo will uh, no longer fit inside the body which is illegal. After you finish the back of the car you can then turn the sketch into a polygon and then once you've done that you want to do a big sketch around the uh, around the sketch you've just done and isolate that body you want to cut which is the body and um, then you just extrude the outermost sketch so it uh, cuts into that uh, body now, if you shelled the car, which I specifically told you not to, this is when you're going to start to run into some problems. You're going to have open parts and it's just going to be an absolute nightmare. And so that's when you just delete the shell entirely from your timeline 
and uh, once you've fixed up the yellows and reds that probably have appeared in your timeline, you then go back to that scenario when you have just extruded through your body. After doing this, you should have the body that surrounds the virtual cargo and is able to hold the halo. And from here on, you can kind of see that it's starting to resemble a F1 in school scar, but we've still got some way to go. So if you've made it here, well done. You're doing great. So now we've done that, we kind of want to fix up that rear pod. It's at the moment a bit too high for our liking, so we're just going to extrude up from the sketch we made earlier. But we're not going to go all the way because otherwise the sketch is going to go right through it. Instead, we're going to take the lazy route, go halfway until it just about intersects, then we'll delete the bottom surface and that should nicely join together. Now, you can kind of see the virtual cargo that it's actually still not in the body. Uh, don't worry, this is a very simple fix to do. Uh, to do this, just use the press pull down, uh, click the surface and pull it down. Now, the reason why we haven't combined the two separate bodies yet with the loft and the main body that you've just extruded is because if we needed to change something like we did right there, the CAD program probably wouldn't allow us to do that because of uh, two complex bodies and press and pulling uh, tends to retain the pattern when extrusion. Now, after you have made your nose, it's probably a good idea to check that the front wing is actually going to fit because if it doesn't and you continue making iterations to this design, it's going to be an absolute nightmare to uh, change the design, then go back through the timeline. It, it takes ages. And this is the moment when I realized that my front wheels were too close to the center of the car. But with some quick dilly-dallying, I'm able to fix that and show that the front wing that I'm going to make is in fact going to fit on the car. And with that, I now have correct wheels and a body that fits all of the regulations. Although I'm not modeling an entirely manufacturable car, for instance, I'm not making the front wing and rear wing a separate components uh, i did want to make the kind of sitting zone for the halo as that is a new section and so uh, i'll show you my processes now so instead of sketching and extruding meticulously the volume of the halo i decided to just duplicate the halo and do a combined cut of the car because that way of the halo sorry of that way i'm able to kind of create the uh, halo's perfect body shape within the car but i did this once and then realized that the fillets and the halos were really annoying so i decided to then delete the fillets and then do the same process again and then extrude that bottom face with no fillets upwards to get rid of any uh, horrible inconsistencies and then after that i just deleted any uh, random surface faces now i don't want this to be a pain in the arse to upload to youtube so I will speed it up a bit, but you should be able to understand what's happening. So this gives a very nice kind of holding area for the halo and if we were to add even more manufacturing constraints for the assembly process we would uh, press and pull uh, 0.1 millimeters on every surface to ensure that if there were some additive warping and the actual halo itself was bigger than anticipated it would still fit. Um, also remember that when you do finish making the car and you're ready to send it off for, for CNC milling uh, you make sure that the 90 degree edges in those pocket areas have a 3.175 millimeter fillet uh, not only for your cnc millimeter for your sorry for your cnc router but also for your halo as the halo's uh, fillet radius is 3.175 millimeters so you see here that i'm making sketches on the underside of the main body so that i can then extrude them downwards towards the wheels and this kind of gives a very nice side profile and you can really start to see the car forming now you've got the rear pods you now have the side pods there's uh, a lot of the main body going on we've still got a lot of uh, small minute details to fix though one of the main problems with professional class cars is getting the weight down uh, i know that was one of my problems in uh, nightingale and uh, one of the things that you can do here on the parametric design 
is by shelling the bodies. Now you'd have to first split the body because otherwise if you shell the main body, you're going to shell the entire component, which isn't good. We only want to shell the side pods and rear pods. So you want to split the body by using the underside of a body as the splitting tool. And so by doing this, you can then shell the outer surface. I tend to put three millimeters for the thickness of a foam. I feel like that's a pretty good thickness to use. I saw that the side pods were taking in a lot of airflow and I didn't really like that. So I to just quickly iterate that, I just went back into the timeline, into the sketches, iterated the sketches, came out of the timeline and uh, solved any issues with the timeline if any were to arise, as you can see. And this is when I realized that the minimum thickness of the CO2 chamber zone was actually less than three millimeters. Um, and so I just kind of went back into the timeline and uh, fixed all that. I'll just skip over that though, because you should have fixed that by putting 24.1 millimeters instead of 24 millimeters at the very start of the tutorial. So now that the CO2 chamber is legal, I can start to look back over the car, making sure that the rear and side pods are only taking up as much surface area as they need to. Uh, in this case, my rear and side pods were taking up a bit more surface area. But I just use the press and pull tool to um, drag the walls back ever so slightly so that it, so that it was in line with the rear wheels. Um, because it was three millimeters beforehand, this shouldn't really affect the, um, the structural integrity of the foam. And uh, because of this, it was uh, absolutely fine. So before we move on to the next step of the process, we want to make sure that all of the joins are very nice, especially when it comes to the rear pods. I know that some of those tend to break if they're not too thick. And uh, in this case, the support for the rear pod hangs slightly past the rear pod itself. Um, I wasn't a big fan of that. So I took a bit of uh, inspiration from the stealth bomb wing, how it kind of changes its uh, its cord length throughout the uh, entire wing. And I kind of wanted to integrate that here. Uh, and so to do this, I just extruded and I uh, then used a variable fillet afterwards as well, which is an advanced modeling technique that should be used in your engineering portfolio. So the variable fillet function is a bit more advanced than the normal fillet function as it allows you to change the radius of a fillet throughout one edge. Um, and so in this case, the rear pod connection joint has a very thick section uh, towards the CO2 gas canister but as it comes to the end of the rear pod it gets a lot thinner and so I decided to use the variable fillet here to ensure that it created a nice fillet throughout. Um, you can see the processes I'll make sure that it's not in a sped up at all so you can uh, go through it quite nicely. Now it is a bit fidgety with this and so you do have to take your time. Uh, in this case the fillet that I had done beforehand was a bit too large so I decided to change that and reduce the fillet from the connection from the rear pod to the main body and, uh, and then afterwards I decided to delete the combining tool from the that combined the loft uh, to the main body that we just made and because of this it made the uh, it made it a lot easier for the computer to, un to understand the uh, variable fillet function. And uh, by doing this, it, it just made the entire process a lot easier. It is a bit of trial and error with some of the fillets. Um, sometimes Fusion would allow 2.999, but won't allow three millimeters. Um, it is a bit weird. In that case, you know, that's, there's not much else you can do. It's not going to change that much, though, if it's uh, to one thousandth of a decimal place. Now you've seen me use the term parametric and the reason why is because there's different ways you can model a car. You've got parametric modeling and freeform modeling. Uh, what we're showing you is, what I'm showing you, sorry, is parametric modeling right now. However, freeform is kind of using the uh, freeform function in Fusion 360. Um, I used it for my World Finals card because it's uh, really easy to create aerodynamic shapes and it's also quite easy to iterate as well between, um, I mean, between uh, kind of getting different nose designs and main bodies and because of, that, because of that it creates a really efficient iterative development cycle which again is part of the engineering portfolio so on your 3D modeling page you know it helps however with um, parametric modeling you are able to use something called uh, variable parameters which uh, we can get onto later but as this is um, kind of starting off on what to do with a professional class car I will not be going into that. And that's it. That is the longest part that this tutorial has to offer. So if you do make it up to this point, you can definitely make it all the way to the end. And so I hopefully will see you in the next tutorial.